Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and today I will be making creme brulee with a matcha flavor. This will be my first time making this and I thought I could add a twist to it by adding in matcha powder since I have a surplus of it in this kitchen. I've always wanted to make creme brulee because using a blowtorch on the sugar to finish off the dish just seems really fun. First off, I'm going to pour heavy cream into a medium saucepan and set it over medium heat. While that heats up, I'm going to whisk the matcha powder right as it goes into the heavy cream. Not sure if straining it matters too much, but I feel like it will be easier to dissolve and mix that way. As the steam rises and as the cream is at a simmer, I'm going to add in the vanilla extract. I'll stir it a bit more, then I'll remove it from the heat. I'm not too good at this step, so let's see how I do. Next up, I'm going to grab a medium bowl and add five large egg yolks. I usually have a tough time separating the yolks from the egg whites. Whenever I use the eggshells to separate them, there's always a bit of stubborn egg whites oh no. stuck to the yolk that I can never separate. Maybe I should just use my hands to separate them next time. That's four down. Two have broken in here already. This one broke too. Once this long step is done, I'm going to whisk the egg yolks with some sugar and a pinch of salt until they are thoroughly mixed, creating a smooth and slightly thickened mixture. Now comes the crucial part. I'm going to combine the hot cream with the egg mixture without scrambling the eggs. I will do that by slowly drizzling the hot cream into the egg mixture while whisking continuously until it's at a smooth texture. Then, I'm going to strain the mixture through a fine mesh sieve into a large measuring cup to make sure that the custard is silky smooth. At this point, I think now is a good time to preheat my oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. While that preheats, I'm going to divide the custard evenly among five ramekins using a scale to make sure they're all even. Once that's done, onto a baking dish they go. I will be using a 9 by 13 inch pan that I can fill up with water in order to make a water bath. I'm going to carefully fill the baking dish with boiling water until it reaches about halfway up the sides of the ramekins and once that's done, it's time to bake. I'm going to leave it in for 30 to 35 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This low temperature is key to achieving the perfect custard texture. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> now, as I slowly transferred the dish into the oven, I hit my, arm. my elbow made slight contact with the hot surface and I spilled some of the custard. I gotta clean this mess up. Bad news is that each ramekin doesn't weigh the same anymore. But good news, I didn't spill that much and I'm still good to start baking these. But before I do, I gotta clean up the spill real quick. <laughs> Ow, man. Once they're done baking, I'm carefully transferring the ramekins onto a wire rack to cool to room temperature in order to help the custards firm up further. After they have cooled, I'm going to cover the ramekins and refrigerate them for at least two hours or up to three days. This allows the flavors to meld and the custard to set properly, making it easier to achieve that perfect creme brulee texture. When I'm ready to serve, it's time to create the iconic caramelized sugar topping. I'm going to sprinkle in two teaspoons of sugar over each custard, shaking the ramekin to make sure that the sugar is evenly spread on top. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Using a kitchen torch, I'm going to caramelize the sugar by moving the flame in a circular pattern until the entire surface is a deep amber color.
After torching it for who knows how long, I noticed a lot of smoke coming out of the ramekin, so I figured it's done caramelizing. But I feared that the sugar might taste bad since I think I may have torched it a bit too long. The only way to find out is to give it a taste. Other than that, I have successfully formed a beautiful glassy layer that shatters delightfully with each spoonful. Upon tasting, the caramelized sugar tasted great and so does that creme brulee. I'm definitely going to make this again soon, but maybe without matcha the next time because I'm sensitive to caffeine and I do want to eat a lot of this. And that is it for me in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if you see something I could improve on, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video where I make fettuccine carbonara. See you all in the next one.